Hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only Maxi here, and I am back for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Piglet's Big Game for the <laughs> Nintendo GameCube slash PlayStation 2. This is good bouncing! <laughs> <laughs> Tigger? Tigger? Mm, this is a catastrophic catastrophe. Tigger, you're all orange. Have you really lost your stripes, Tigger? Yeah. And a Tigger with no stripes is the worstest kind of a Tigger. <laughs> I guess I'll just have to be a stripeless tigger forever. Aww, poor tigger. Oh, don't worry, tigger. We'll get your stripes back for you. For real? Oh, thanks, piglet old pal. You know, I I, I saw them striping these pounce off towards the carnival. Maybe you could try looking there. So yeah, last time, we have essentially did somehow manage to got started with Tico's Dream, and overall, we're actually doing not too bad, all things considered, especially since Journey forms of the beginning portion of Tico's Dream, is that we did somehow manage to able to collect some tons of stuff, and on top of that, we did somehow manage to take control of Pooh Bear for the final time throughout the majority of the game, until when he gets his own game until 2005. So either way though, chances are, hopefully we're able to meet up with Pooh Bear again at some point in the future. So either way, so today for this video is about the fact that we're about to be continuing exploring through Tico's dream, and hopefully we can able to actually complete that entire dream as well. Well, mind you, we're still missing a quite a few cookies here and there, but as you can see, we somehow a obtained the magnet. magnet. So, what can we use it for? Well, we need to head back into the previous areas because, as you can see, that this particular balloon is blocking the actual entrance to Tigger's house. So, we do need to be able to pick up something that's remotely sharp. So hopefully we're able to find that, and I think the actual solution with this is, is that we need to head back down to the slide as we go, and because of that, we now need to backtrack for a bit, until we're able to actually find something a bit sharper, because since we've got the magnet after all, so yeah, you probably get the idea about this is going, so either way, so a few things we want to explain while this is going on is that, well, today's day is of course the, uh, the I think it's today is the 22nd of March today, in this case in 2023 today. Not much else is going on in terms of like, uh, physical news or anything else to be more specific. Well, apart from the, for the fact that for one thing in mind, although thankfully we did somehow manage to find the last five cookies in this particular area, so, either way though, because chances are, I somehow managed able to guess that correctly, because it was right where, um, that particular pillar was. So, either way, so yeah, a few things we want to explain is that, uh, basically, that, uh, we do somehow realize about the fact that, well, I'm happy to report that, uh, the Nintendo Switch Online services, in terms of the Game Boy games, not only for the Game Boy games, but also one of them for the Super Nintendo, and one for the NES, has officially been updated. Which, there are, brings us to the forms of four games total. Well, it only happened in June, it forms within, uh, a couple of days ago. Well, technically ever since about almost a week ago, since on uh, the 16th of March, and uh, those are, specifically, well let's get started with the forms of the Super Nintendo first. Uh, basically, they show us Side Pocket, which appears to be it's more like, like a billiards game or something like that. And another one, which uh, I think that's about it, basically, for the Super Nintendo titles. And as far as I'm aware, the one on the NES, which appears to be, it's like, I don't know, like, Xing first, I think is what it says anyway, despite the fact that I missed pronunciation with that particular game's title, because I do apologize for that. So, now in terms of the Game Boy games though, they somehow managed to able to reveal not only Burger Time, but surprisingly, we got ourselves Kirby's Dream Land 2, for the Game Boy, because, you know, since then we've already got Kirby's Dream Land 1, and now in the forms of in March, we've already got the sequel of Kirby's Dream Land. 
So, relatively speaking, as far as I'm aware, we did somehow manage to able to obtain almost every single classic Kirby games onto the Nintendo Switch now. I guess the only ones in these left, which is, it has to be by the forms of Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland for the Game Boy Advance expansion pack, for its, uh, you know, Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack, as far as what I meant to say. And, uh, I don't know about the forms of, uh, Squeed Squad, or potentially Superstar Ultra, but we shall see what happens in due time for the future for the Nintendo Switch. So, either way... So now we've actually got ourselves the dart in our hands, so now we can able to actually pop this particular balloon, so that way we can now able to actually just to pop that balloon, so... And, uh, of course, as you can see, since that we've already somehow managed to dive right into the actual springy flower, so of course you somehow skip the actual scene, because technically we've already seen it since in the last video, so either way though, I love the fact that once we get into Tico's house itself, that basically, much like the forms of Owl's Dream, it does- it did somehow manage to bring into ourselves some quite a few references here and there, except this time those picture frames are actually entirely based off from the Tigger movie, so with all that, you know, Tigger picture frames and all that stuff, yeah, you get the idea about that. And there goes the balloon, so now we can able to head out to the left, and before we continue things on, on, on the other hand, it's best to know about the fact that it's important that don't go down the slide, because otherwise you have to do the ridiculous backtrack, so instead, head to the left until you pick up something. And by the way, that item is mandatory if you want to progress, and that's what appears to be the ticket, so... Yeah, that's all I can say about it. So, down to the another slide, except now it'll lead us straight to where, you know, the mirror walls all, um, carousel was a thing. So, either way, now we've actually done with the Tigger's house itself, despite the fact that we still, you know, missing quite a few cookies there. So, I think that's basically all there is to it when it comes to the winter uh, section. Well, mind you, we're still not exactly done with the winter section just yet, because there's still more to come. So, for the time being, I think we should now focusing on the autumn section now, because despite the fact that we didn't do that much, aside from, you know, just grabbing ourselves the actual, uh, the shuffle, thanks to utilizing the broomstick, to be able to actually just to sweep up all of these, uh, brown leaves and all that stuff, but the ones we haven't got into is actually by the forms of towards the very end of the dream that uh, basically we have never actually come across into ourselves. Uh, not only for this particular level up right there, but it's also about the fact that with the, uh, I would say a haunted uh, mansion or something, or haunted manor for that matter. So either way, let's go and use the ticket to able to pass through. And thankfully, it doesn't usually go, like, limited, uh, time offering, so, yeah, I guess that probably explains it, so... Anyway, so now we're done with that, let's see what's up next, then. Piglet! Ooh, have you seen Tigger's Stripes? Yes, I've seen them. This way! They're hidden in the haunted house, but the gate is locked. Wait, Piglet, I've got an idea on how to open it. Oh, hooray, it works. I found a strange sign on the ground. Do you think a heffalump or a woozle could have dropped it? Maybe if you find the other three symbols, you can open this gate. Okay, so as it turns out, in order to able to actually access to the Haunted Mansion, is that we need to able to collect our uh, three tiles, basically. So in some cases though, thankfully Rue has already inserted one of them out of the four. So meaning about the fact that I'm presuming to you, he did somehow obtain the title based off from spring season. So the only three remaining are which there are autumn, summer, and winter. So I think that's basically all those to it. Now as you can see, we've still went across the final Brave Face factory, and this is where we get ourselves the final Brave Face in the game. That looks a lot more intimidating than the previous uh, Brave Faces, for sure. But relatively speaking, there's nothing we need to worry about just trying to keep on finding those cookies every now and then, because, well, 
Suffice to say, we've got every single brave scary faces throughout the whole game. So now, all we need to do now is just basically we need to do, well, some mandatory stuff as to be expected. So, either way, so, I don't know what exactly what the grand total of amounts of cookies you have to spend uh, throughout the majority of the playthrough. Because, relatively speaking, though, it has been about, you know, two days ago since I actually last played this for sure. But, either way, though, that might be saying something, so... Anyway, so, yeah, let's get to the forms of the first, um, title we need to obtain, and that is to try to deal with this another Heffalump encounter that we've somehow already stolen across into, even though despite the fact that he doesn't stand a chance, because all he does is just simply just brushes onto the actual, uh, button command sequences right here, which obviously just somehow managed able to almost cover up the button commands sequence, so, but honestly, these guys are not much of a threat, I must be honest, because especially noticeable concerning about the fact that, well, I think this is the only encounter you were able to stumble across into these guys, to be more specifically in Tigger's Dream, most likely, because it will never see in light of day on, uh, let's just say, in the finale portion of the game. Well, mind you, about the fact that we still have to go and anticipate it for the actual challenge coming up. But either way, that takes care of one of those heavy lumps right here. And that way, we can get ourselves the Autumn Leaf Pile, or to be more specifically, the Panel. So, either way, though, that way we can able to insert that into one of those, um... You know what I mean, the actual panel keys, in order to able to open up the uh, Haunted Mansion. But uh, either way, we're not exactly done with that, because either way, now we need to obtain the Summer Panel and the Winter Panel. And that would be about it, basically. So, I suppose another thing I should probably explain about this too, is about the fact that, well, uh, suffice to say, is that recently Disney Speedstorm has finally got itself its release date, and it's going to be releasing until at some point in April. To be more specifically, April 18th on 2023 for the Nintendo Switch, and I'm not exactly sure about other platforms though. Because for I've heard that the Switch might be the only one managed able to get the release date so far. And I think it's about to do out about three days before um, Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp for the Switch. So, either way though, that might be quite a pleasant surprise when it comes to like multiple releases during that time. Oh, and another thing too, is that out of nowhere, that DreamWorks is actually getting its new movie, um, out of nowhere, which appears to be by the forms of, let's just say, a Ruby Gelman Teenage Kraken, or Kraken, whatever, whatever that is. So, yeah, apparently that film is almost inspired by not only Luca, but also The Little Mermaid smashed into one, apparently. So, either way though, I have seen a trailer of it, and it might look a bit promising. Well, mind you about the fact that I'm still usually hyped about the forms of the, you know, the Super Mario Bros. movie, of course. And uh, I'm not exactly sure when that film is it going to be able to be, well, not just by the forms of the Super Mario Bros. movie, because it's still going to be on April the 5th, after all. Well, at least to be more specifically in America and the UK releases, and some other countries as well. But uh, as far as that film, I have briefly mentioned this earlier. Um, I'm not exactly sure when that's going to be released, though, because it's all, like, just depending on, you know, certain release schedules at mind. But either way, though, I have honestly have no idea why I somehow managed to did this. Uh, you know, this buzzing combination, and we'll just do it from here, and we'll just try to escape after this animation ends, before we able to actually get into, like, worry mode, and then, surprisingly enough, we've never actually come across into worry mode, or, to be more specifically, panic mode, throughout the majority of the game so far, because, obviously, like I mentioned this before, I played this game so many times, you know, back in a long time ago, but either way, though, let's just grab this potion right here, alongside with the other one too, to able to get ourselves the third and the final panel, so that way we can now able to actually do a bit of a puzzle segment. So, no, I think, well, to be speaking, no, I think this will actually be the last time we're going to be doing some bit of puzzle solving here and there, because, well, despite the fact that we still need to able to deal with, like, you know, uh, trying to able to get some the items here and there. Well, mind you about the fact that, again, it's been about two days ago since I actually have last played this, so... 
Anyway, so let's go ahead and continue things on for this point. And uh, relatively speaking, though, uh, recently I've managed to able to go into the forms of the new tour that just came up today for the Mario Kart Tour. And yeah, I am uh, quite pleased to able to see uh, Dry Dry Ruins, who finally makes his a welcoming return. Despite the fact that I still have to get accustomed to the forms of bad controls again. Which, I know I keep on saying this, but it bears repeating, for instance. And because of that, though, I'm just still really hoping they'll be able to have a actual Bluetooth control support. Because, well, I don't know about you, because I'm getting tired of utilizing the forms of the phone controls. They're able to do not only with this awkward turns, but also awkward utilizing of drifting. And because of that, yeah, I will say this right now, that Mario Kart Tour is basically the equivalent to Sonic Free Riders. Like, again, the visuals with both of those games are amazing, and the soundtrack is pretty cool stuff. But it's just the controls are so inconsistent between both Sonic Free Riders and Mario Kart Tour. Because I know they both share the exactly the same premise. At least to me anyway, though. But either way, no, I get ahead of myself. So either way. So now let's head back into the entrance of the Haunted Mansion. And we can surely, we can able to insert those uh, remaining tiles. And obviously, thanks to those particular pictures, that actually gives us a hint of certain uh, heffalumps or woozles. They did somehow manage able to, like, hidden them somewhere. Excuse me, I uh, somehow belched all of a sudden, which I know it seems incredibly gross, which I do apologize for that. And I believe that should open up the entrance to the actual mansion itself. And once again, we get auto saving as well, so there's going to be a lot of auto saving sequences in uh, Tigger's Dream, believe it or not. Because, relatively speaking, though, because, again, that this particular dream is by far the longest in the game. Because they're expecting about the fact that there's going to be, uh, you know, quite a few backtracking moments here and there. Like, you know, with that particular dart, as we've already, uh, um, addressed that. Well, this particular mansion sure looks a bit pitch black around here. But, much like the forms of, let's just say, Owl's Dream and Eeyore's Dream essentially as well, uh, once again we do need to able to get a candle in order to able to do something to do with those candles, so... And I think this will be the last time we could be able to uh, utilize the candles or anything else to be more specific. And I think, relatively speaking, we do need to lit up for about two candles in this particular section, much like the forms of the eel stream. So, except the fact that this is where we come across into ourselves, in my honest opinion, one of the hardest challenges in the game, at least to be more specifically, the time limit challenges, because, well, sometimes the AI is pretty strict. Pivot, it's Tinker Stripes! Catch them all, hurry! Oh, and this is where we come across into ourselves not one, but five Tico Stripes that we do need to obtain. But as I mentioned this before, that this is by far the hardest uh, time limit uh, challenges in my opinion. Just because, as I said before, the AI can sometimes feel a bit restricted sometimes. And on top of that, I don't think I can probably be able to catch them all on the first attempts. Because there is no possible way you can be able to do this on the first attempts. Because sometimes they split apart, or in some cases, is they always spread apart and on top of that if you think you're about to able to corner them very easily with all that treasure chest and any other furniture around here i swear to god they always so unpredictable when it comes to likely of knowing what they're about to up against and because of that though i can totally see why that this is by far the hardest time limit challenges in my opinion and uh well Luckily, if you do manage to obtain one of those stripes in general, thankfully you keep them forever, so you don't have to restart everything in this entire phase. So, there goes all the candles. Piglet would have to be very quick, for the Tigger stripes were not going to be easy to catch. 
tell me about it, Netherator, because, again, as I said before, I don't think I can do this on the first attempt, because, obviously, this is this will be now be my second attempt. But again, luckily, you don't have to worry about grabbing those ticker stripes again, because the ones I did somehow collected from earlier ago, I think I did somehow obtain about two of them, or technically three, to be more specifically. So, either way, there goes the, uh, well, sometimes this AI... Uh, behavior can sometimes feel a bit out of whack, but uh, thankfully that we did somehow obtain that. Now let's go ahead and obtain the fifth and final ticker stripes, even though this one is a bit picky to able to actually just try to, you know, try to get, and uh, yeah, come on. And there it goes. Yippee! That was great, Piglet! You caught all of Tigger's stripes! Now let's get them back to Tigger! Let's go! Jeez, that time limit challenge is pretty tough. Especially concerning about the fact that this is not the final time, time we were able to actually come across into that particular time limit clock thing. Because, again, if we hit back into the previous dreams, then... You probably know what I'm about to talk about for the sake of time. So, anyway, I suppose I should probably mention about the last thing I want to mention for this today's discussion. That will have to be by the forms of, well, apparently one of those merchandise for the sake of the forms of the Super Mario Bros. movie uh, is actually getting its um, release until specifically, um, let's just say, on the 24th of March in uh, 2023. Relatively speaking, just about two days' time. Like, for instance, there is actually by the forms of a uh, lush crossover with the Super Mario Bros. movie. And because of that, one of those items for these merchandise they've mentioned, it might be something related to bath. Which meaning it might be actually be bath bombs. And what's cool about this is, is that it actually replicates the shape like a question mark block. Pretty cool, huh? Especially concerning about the fact that I don't usually go after those bath bombs, I must be honest here. So, either way, I think something tells me something is going on around here. Piglet, look! It's a message from Tigger! What does it say, Roo? I think Tigger's trying to tell us he locked himself in the haunted house so that no one will have to look at a stripeless Tigger. That sure doesn't sound like our Tigger. I guess losing his stripes has really made him scared. Oh, Piglet, we just have to find Tigger and his stripes. So, you mean to tell me is about the fact that Tigger's gone missing, and because of that, I believe something tells me we need to head back into that exactly the same place as we've already previously went into, which meaning we need to head back into the Haunted Mansion as we go, because I think something tells me that we will come across into our familiar face, Ever since in journey forms of it, not only in Rue's dream, but also with Eeyore's dream as well. Which, if you probably already know the pattern of the forms of the level uh, structure or anything else to be more specific. So, either way, yeah, I'm guessing that's pretty much as far as I can say about it. But again, since that, the good thing we did somehow manage to able to obtain the final uh, brave face in the game. So, naturally speaking, this will be the final time we will come across into that familiar um, thing, as we've already discovered through twice, so, either way though, but this is now generally the third, and roughly the final time, to able to actually stumble across into that, you know what I'm saying. So, again, I apologize for my comment take, it's a little bit awkward at this point, because of that stupid lag problem for my preview recording commentary, as you probably already expect. Huh? What? You again? You don't give up, do you? <sighs> All right, let's go. See, I told you, the talking door is back, and, you know, this is the third and final time coming across into him. And because of that, since we've got all of the brave faces in the game, and we some got, somehow we got interrupted by one of those heffalumps to deal with. So, yeah, we'll quickly deal with you first. So, either way, that way we should be able to actually... Oh, actually, let's do this one more time. And there he goes. Anyway, now let's get into the actual main point of the fight. That is, of course, the talking door himself. So, bring it on, mister, for the third and final time. And now we have five button combinations and the directional uh, inputs. So, farewell, talking door. Never see, the, uh, never see me in the light of day.
And this is where we come across into ourselves, I would classify as saying, the final types of Warzolls throughout the majority of the game. And, uh, I totally think that these guys are not much of a threat to me, though. What's cool about this particular arena is that unlike any forms of how it does it on Rue's stream and Eel's stream, that you have to fight one of those enemies at a time before you move on to the next, in here, you need to be able to fight all three of these in exactly the same room. So relatively speaking, it doesn't really matter if you can be able to actually took them out or not, but either way, these are the forms of- I'm not exactly sure what these Warsaw's names are, because I will point things out for that particular main mechanic of these guys. Is that every time when if you wait for a little bit for your button inputs to be able to be, uh, you know, trying to be pressed or something. Basically, he decides to be able to switch over not only button um, icons, but also the directional uh, stuff as well. Like, for instance, if we try to take down this tennis player, Wolzel, then if you wait it for a little bit, basically the button icon has been switched over. So because of that, well, to me though, these guys are not much of a threat, I must be honest, especially concerning about the fact that I was expecting to be a little bit more intense or threatening, unlike the forms of how it does it on uh, Tupa Heffalon from the likes of an EO stream. But either way though, thankfully we don't need to worry about the forms of not only the ridiculous amount of loading screens, but also the amount of cutscenes as well, every time you took down one of those enemies, to be more specific. So, anyways, let's go and deal with this last Wolzel enemy right here, and, uh, relatively speaking, we are basically done with Tigger's Dream, and my god, I've almost spent about an hour in this particular dream, assuming, of course, if I was trying to go back into that particular dream, if I do somehow missed out on quite a few cookies around here, which... I think something tells me I did somehow skip over certain cookies, so... Either way, last two button combinations, and there goes that particular tennis player, Wolzel, and because, you know, he just likes to be able to whack things with the racket, so there we go. Piglet, is, is that you? Thank you, Piglet! I sure did miss my Tiggery stripes. Oh, Tigger, where have you been? I got all surrounded by Woozle Fee, so I bounced in here to think of a plan for getting past them. <laughs> but thanks to you, this place is Woozle Free! You know, Piglet, old pal, I think that you might be just almost as brave as a Tigger, almost. Oh, you, you really think so? Why, you betcha! <laughs> <laughs> and so it was that thanks to his dream, Tigger understood that even if his friend Piglet did not look like a Tigger, he certainly had the courage and strength of one. I'm back to being my same old self with all my Tiggerific stripes! And it's thanks to you, Piglet! <laughs> And as everyone slept peacefully, the rain continued to fall. Down and down it fell, until the water began to rise and rise. Oh dear, if this continued, the water would rise over Piglet's friends who were all asleep. To overcome your fears, you must believe in yourself. Oh dear, it feels like Sonic Adventure all over again, except the fact that, well, the rain is causing the actual 100 acre wood to flood. So, relatively speaking, and it also does remind me of uh, Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day, so either way though, to be expected at this point. So now, generally speaking, since we've completed all six of those dreams, so generally, the game is not over yet, because we do technically come across into the final level in the game, and speaking of final, this is where we come across into ourselves the final Disney clip right here, 
And this is basically, it's like a drawing montage from the likes of that particular song called The More I Look Inside song. So, yeah, I just want to classify that. So, yeah, I think we should probably end things off at this point right here, don't you think? So join me next time for more of Let's Play of Pick Let's Pick Game. Is that we're about to be hit back into the previous dreams and take on the bravest of them all challenges. So I'll see you guys until then. Later, fellas.